Welcome to The Songwriter. Tonight, an artist whose musical journey took a turn in 1987 when he got off the tractor and answered a phone call that would change his life. Since then, he has won three Junos, four CCMA awards, and released seven discs, including his brand new CD, Survivor. He has performed at Expo in Seville, Spain, sung at the Olympic Games in Atlanta, Georgia, and recently returned from a concert tour in Australia where he appeared on the Australian Country Music Awards. He has come a long way since he left the farm behind. Tonight, the songwriter, George Fox. As a kid, I, growing up on the farm, I'd see the weather report and see, you know, places like Rio de Janeiro in Brazil and Sydney, Australia, and, uh, uh, you know, Moosom in Saskatchewan. <laughs> and think, well, I wonder if I'll ever get to those places. But uh, sure enough, I have, and it's uh, the greatest thing about the business, probably, is all the opportunities to travel. You know, there's got to be more to life than having everything. Uh, really, I sort of feel like I've uh, been very fortunate. Um, in the past few years, I've got a, a, a great wife and a uh, home now in southern Ontario. You know, I, I, as far as my career, I, you know, we continually do well touring, and the fans are uh, always there for us. So those two elements are, are really important to me. So I, I'm real happy with that. But it takes a while to get there. I mean, it takes, you know, 10 years in the music business. There's a lot of ups and downs. The highs are real high and the lows are real low. It, it changes you as a person. I think you become a, you know, I'm going to be pretty wise when I'm 65, I'll tell you. I, I, I've been through some uh, uh, ups and downs, that's for sure. But you learn to, you know, not to project your success into something bigger all the time. You know, to create and not compete is really important in this business because uh, obviously a lot of people, uh, not myself of course, but uh, you know, if you have a big ego, that's why you get started because you want to be somebody in the business. You want to have that big purple tour bus and stuff and uh, have your music known. That's a, that's a part of it. And uh, sometimes that gets complicated with the music and just telling your story and trying to represent what you think is important to people through songs and uh, so I think I got that straightened out after you know 10 11 years of, uh, of living it uh, I got it I think I got some pretty good answers for myself anyway I don't know why I can't just leave I guess the good times mean more to me I forgive you all the words you want me to say mean them, but right now I can't even say I'll stay. What's holding me ain't what's been holding you. I don't want to know his name. You can't explain. There's no reason, no real excuse. The truth hurts more than all the lies I hear. that he's been holding you. Typically, when you get off the road uh, touring across Canada, the hockey rinks and big audiences, you're really on a high, but you know, somewhere you gotta balance it out and, and uh, you crash emotionally, you get kind of down and out. That's a good time to write songs. I take advantage of that usually, but uh, you know, there's disappointments, as I say, when you first start, like when they first rolled over a rock and discovered me out in Cochrane, Alberta, I mean, I thought I got in with Ann Murray's management and Warner Music, and I thought, I'm on my way, you know, I'm going to be, uh, uh, and we had, we had a great run for maybe three or four years of, uh, you know, the industry was uh, like, who is this guy, George Fox, and we had some great opportunities, and Leonard Rambo, who was, uh, did such a great job of uh, guiding my career, after I had hosted the Country Music Awards the first year, 1991, that was the first time a Canadian had done it solo. You know, I was so proud to be involved, and uh, we seemed to, you know, go over real well, and we were patting each other on the back after that show, and he said, you know, George, I don't know what we're going to do after this. You know, we've done, you know, and it was true. I thought about it. We'd done a CBC special. We'd done the hosting. We'd toured. We had the gold records, and uh, so the United States, I guess, was the next horizon, but I don't feel like we ever got an opportunity to do anything there. And uh, kind of like Tim Hortons, I never made it in the States, you know. <laughs> but uh, uh, 
you know, nonetheless, I mean, at that stage, you're, you're sort of waiting for the next, uh, you have these delusions of grandeur, as they say, you're waiting for the next step up, but, you know, you're hitting your head on the ceiling. So, uh, you know, I just, I kind of realized that and lived with it and, uh, you know, have uh, gone on, had other challenges in my life, you know, uh, personal challenges and stuff that uh, have fulfilled those things. And... The songwriter. George Fox will return in a moment. The songwriter with George Fox now continues. No, I think, yeah, initially, I, I think I was just uh, petrified to go on the Tommy Hunter show, you know. You know, it's one thing to develop your voice and, and kind of hear yourself on tape and you get comfortable with what, it, what it's like and how you want to be heard, but when you see yourself for the first time on TV, it's like, yikes, you know, I gotta, I gotta do some work here. It's a great motivator to be thinking you're going to be in front of a million people and you're going to be kind of, you know, you want to look good and sound good. Uh, so I think I've gotten more comfortable with it over the years. It's certainly been a great vehicle to get out in, in front of people and uh, you get into people's lives. You're part of the family almost through TV. So uh, even though it is kind of nerve-wracking, it's really a really worthwhile thing to do. <laughs> favorite video, First Comes Love, that turned out great, uh, even though the day we shot it was unbelievably cold. I mean, it was like a, a wind that was just going right through you, and we had uh, everybody huddled in this little motor home trying to stay warm, and we were all just saying, man, how are we going to, we got to cancel this. So, you know, sometimes when you're pushed to the limit like that, you get, a, I think, a, a special performance, and that's what happened, and that, that, the song, to me, speaks of life. Nobody knows about the here and after What really does and doesn't matter The question's tough, but the answer's simple enough First comes love First comes love If you can send a good message in a song, that's really the ultimate. I think I First Comes Love does that. All of George's videos are popular with his fans, and that's important to George. Fan support for his early work took him from low-profile appearances in shopping malls to concert performances in the Saddle Dome in less than a year. And through the years, his fans have remained loyal to his heartfelt music. The fan letters that come in, I've always answered. Uh, up until a few years ago, I, I really made a point of answering each one. and uh, I have a great management company that takes care of that so uh, I don't answer each and every one now but I generally 
uh, answer some and, and look at it all. Uh, because it's really important. I mean, the audience is the boss. That's what I figure. Uh, I think Pavarotti said that. And I thought, boy, you got it right on there, Luciano. So you're really out there uh, trying to do what you enjoy and, and what is meaningful. But also, you got to remember that uh, people really uh, kind of expect a certain thing from George Fox. So, I don't know, every album I just kind of, I, I try and do something, reinvent myself to a certain degree, but I don't kind of mess with my core uh, appeal, I think. In 1996, George married the love of his life, Monica Preston, and returned to his country roots. The couple now has an 80-acre farm on the Niagara Escarpment, and George is having the time of his life. I think that, uh, you know, there was a, a time there where I was, you know, when you're in the business, you get a lot of attention. There's a lot of perfumed letters coming your way, and, you know, it, it's great for your ego, but uh, you sort of really want to share your life with somebody that uh, knows George's, you know, for nothing to do with the music business, and that is really important. Monica, she didn't really, when I first hosted the awards show, she didn't know who I was. Uh, she said, what's this guy doing hosting the show? She didn't know I'd had, a, you know, some hits and stuff across Canada. And that was uh, something just kind of clicked in my brain that, uh, you know, obviously, I, as soon as she walked away, I wanted to sort of follow her. But uh, for some reason, I'm, and I really don't, I never was a guy that flirted around too much, but I said to her, uh, well, yeah, I'm, you know, I was trying to, you know, yeah, I'm, I, I won the male vocalist of the year here last year, you know, and uh, if I win this year because I'm nominated, you're the first person I'm going to give a hug to. And uh, the good Lord kind of smiled down on me that year, and uh, I did win. And, I, of, course, of course, that's what I was thinking about the whole time I was accepting the award. Is I'm going to go find her and give her a hug. And uh, she sort of thought I was crazy, I think. But at least it broke the ice. You know, when I get married, I told myself I was always going to make it last. There's no back door. And uh, we both, I just knew that she felt the same way. You look pretty as a picture with those flowers in your hair Years from now I will remember This vow I made to show I care Even as those flowers fade to brown I will love you then as I do now I give you my word I swear that I will love you until time stands still. Forever I'm yours, for better or worse. I'll stand before God and give you my word. Oh, I do give you my word. Here again, I was in uh, Nashville right after I proposed and uh, wrote the song with Kim. And we did a little demo tape, and I brought it back and played it for my wife. And I said, honey, we're going to dance to this one at the wedding, see what you think. And she loved it, and, you know, it was a, a great moment in my life, you know, and, uh, to get that song written. But I really honestly didn't think I'd ever have it on a, you know, have people coming up and wanting me to sign their don't wedding books. We make perfect love. I don't know if words can go as deep, but here's my promise I will keep. I give you my word. I swear that I will love you until time stands still.
word. We, we made sheet music for the song because so many people wanted it for the weddings, and uh, I had it, you know, sang it in French for the Quebec market, and uh, it's just been a great experience, a great song that I, uh, you know, marks an important part of my life. Je te donne ma parole, je te la promets, l'amour pour toujours, l'éternité, jusqu'à la fin des temps, à ta volonté, ici devant Dieu, je te donne ma parole, oh, je t'aime. The songwriter on CMT will be right back with George Fox. Welcome back to The Songwriter with George Fox. I'm Gone is a, a song that uh, I didn't write it, uh, but I was sure glad to find it in Nashville. It was uh, kind of a real, just real energy, and it had this Cajun thing to it. Hey. Sitting at a table, conversation, me and my buddies follow what they're saying a hundred percent of the daily events. But the minute she walks in my direction, there goes my span of attention, one look in her eye, and I'm gone for a ride. I'm gone, I'm history, she gets the best of me My mind drifts away and instantly I'm in another world wishing she was my girl And nothing else matters at all I'm gone like yesterday to another time and place One sweet smile and I get swept away She give me just enough to dream on And I'm gone It's a great two-stepping song and we just all knew right away it was gonna be a hit coming in here quite some time i got it all figured out in my mind what i want to say and today's the day well here she comes heart be steady play it cool got the words ready she says hello and away i go History, she gets the best of me. My mind drifts away and instantly. I'm in another world wishing she was my girl and nothing else mattered at all. I'm gone like yesterday to another time and place. One sweet smile and I get swept away. She give me just enough to dream on. And I'm gone. We were in the studio, I think we were recording the night the barn burned down. We had the band, they were hot, they were sounding great, and we said, we need, let's take another take, you know, we, let's, let's save that one, take another one. And the engineer scrambling around, I don't know if I got enough, I don't know if I, this tape's long enough. Uh, and then the guy says, well, figure it out, do the math, do the math, how many minutes left on this reel? And I sort of chuckled to myself. So we get out the car, we were going to lunch, and George said, did you hear what that guy said? I said, yeah, I said, I heard that. He said, that's a song I did, and I said, I think so. So we, we st immediately, st we started working on that song at lunch on, you know, on our napkin, you know, and, and it, it was a great ride. Kim came up with a great guitar uh, progression, and uh, I didn't know what the heck he was playing. I had to learn it, and uh, so it, the story just fell right out of it, and uh, it's about a guy, of course, that uh, doesn't quite you know, all the brain waves aren't crashing to the shore, I guess you could say, and he doesn't know she's gone and she ain't coming back. Hey. You talk about her like she's not even gone. And you act like any minute she might call Oh, I was there when you got that Dear John letter So if you don't think it's over, boy, you'd better Do the math, that girl ain't coming back Do the math, divide and then subtract Multiply 
supply the pain you're headed for if you want to know the score do the math hey. when george and i work together we i mean to, to me it's a it's a real it's a great collaboration because it's real equal and we we just get in the room we usually one of us will have an idea or you know either a thought process or or a song title or just an idea and then we'll get in there and we'll just start writing you know working on the tunes and uh, and just work collaborate on it and, and just beat it into shape <laughs> just you know have at it and go you know go until it's finished when uh, you talk to Kim Tribble my co-writer he's on most of these songs he he's real quick and he's you know writes some great lyrics and uh, I probably drive him crazy because I, I like to really make it something that I can relate to I found that uh, it's important that I, you know, I really feel in, at one with it and stuff, and the lyrics are as best they can be. When you're working with an artist, you want to capture what the artist is about in the song. And George is real good about, you know, saying, no, I wouldn't say that, or, you know, that's not how I would handle that. And, and he's real good at being true to his heart and really uh, setting the focal point, the focus. And I think that's. That's not true of some artists. I'll write with some artists, and they'll, they won't, you know, because they don't know what they want, they'll just say, well, yeah, let's just go over there. That sounds cool. But uh, George is, uh, you know, that's, that's really hard. It's hard to stand up and say, no, th this is what I am. And George has that down. He really knows where he's coming from, where he's going, and what he wants to say and how he wants to say it. So it makes my job, you know, really easy. Since George got off the tractor and began pursuing his musical dream full-time, he has been showered with many awards and accolades, but there is one honor that will always stand out in his memory. George Fox Trail. I'll tell you, back in Cochrane, Alberta, they picked a beautiful little street right along the Bow River and named the street after me, and that was a real highlight. Uh, because really, you don't know if you're going to embarrass people in your hometown and your community, or if they're going to really be behind you all the way. I mean, initially, they're right there with you. And, Come on, George, you know, I knew you could win that Juno and uh, stick with it. So for me, going back and being accepted and appreciated, that was, a, that was personally a, a good moment. Another one was, uh, I remember doing a 4-H gig in Calgary. They were having a big anniversary blowout, and we played for these kids and had a riot. They, were just, they, they made more noise than I think it, even at uh, the Sky Dome or, you know, Big Valley Jamboree. I signed autographs forever, and I was just you know, wasted at the end, and these parents were there at the end, and they said, you know, George, we really appreciate you being a great role model for these kids, and I, you know, I thought, I never thought of myself in those terms. No doubt, George's fans will continue to follow his musical trail for years to come. This has been The Songwriter, with George Fox on This Country's Music Television, CMT.